right? So, this fucking brown dwarf or whatever the fuck it's, it is, it's not really fucking... White belt went off to his, uh... He got abducted by aliens. And he's telling us about what's gonna happen when the aliens attack. They were coming to invade us, but they rerouted. They are now? No, they rerouted. So what's going on in 2012 now? I don't know. <laughs> you gotta be up on this shit. You can't be fucking like. Are y'all like, really getting late started on this alien abduction? Yeah, it's awesome. We're way past that shit. Yeah. Yeah. We're next level yeah. shit. Yeah. 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 I just want to determine if I should fucking just live, live my next two years up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are the, those those are the big motherfuckers. Ones. Those are the bad ones. But the human those guys are coming to invade us. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the Jewish aliens? Yeah, those are the Those are the clones. Actually, they have other clones that they're creating uh, that have like heads of dogs, but they only have like three fingers. Part society, and it was taken over. This connected society of greater awareness was taken over by this left brain, merciless, heartless invasion by symbolically Earth troops with their technology and all that stuff. And you even had the symbolism of these uh, invaders infiltrating the Blue People Society by operating inside an outer shell of Blue People so that they didn't know that they were being infiltrated. Now, are we as a human race, there are seven billion of us now and more, the number of people in full knowledge who are behind this are tiny, tiny, and they can only do it by dividing and ruling us. Are we going to stand up, come together and face this, or look the other bloody way and go on walking into a level of enslavement that would make George Orwell bloody wince? Synthetic Merkaba. After a million years or so, it's been eroded, but the proof is there. Now, because the Martians were severed from the unity consciousness, they couldn't create a living Merkaba. They simply used it as a tool. They created a synthetic Merkaba to travel in time and find a new home. A small group of Martians tried to get away from Mars before it was destroyed, and that place they found was Earth. About 65,000 years in our past. They saw this little vortex sitting there, just pulling in life, with no one in it. They didn't ask permission. Being part of the Lucifer experiment, they just said, all right, let's do it. And they stepped onto that vortex, and in doing so, they joined and changed our evolutionary path. There were only a few thousand Martians who came to Earth through the synthetic Merkaba. The first thing they did when they arrived in Atlantis was try to take over the continent. They tried to declare war and invade. However, they were vulnerable due to their small numbers compared to the millions of Atlanteans and we finally subdued them. We were able to stop them from conquering us, but we could not send them back. When this happened on our evolutionary path, we now had the planetary consciousness of a 14-year-old girl. The Martians were an incredibly male species and also very old. So what you had was a 14-year-old girl being taken over by a 60 or 70-year-old man. We had no choice in the matter. The Martians just stepped in and said, like it or not, we're here. They didn't care what we thought or felt about it. Really, it was no different from what the settlers of North America did to the Native Americans. Yeah, now. Anyway, what's all this got to do with Neanderthals, you ask? Well, it just so happens the male Neanderthals morphology makes it so that they would be able to outman the male Homo sapiens, both intrasexually and intersexually. For one, their thick bones and heavy joints suggest that they had way more muscle mass than humans of the day, putting them at a huge advantage both in asserting dominance and in appearing attractive. Secondly, their facial features exaggerate all the characteristics that makes a face appear male in humans, with square, well-defined jaws and heavy brown lines, further increasing their appeal to human females. Broad shoulders, that's hot. Also, their large chest cavities and broad nasal passages would make it so that their vocalizations would be much louder than humans, adding still to their intimidation factor. So basically, when the male Neanderthals strut into a human village, I mean, and to those critics who are so pessimistic about our economy, I say, don't be economic girly man. Every organization and government control over 95% of the money, they control our modern world from the very tippy top. Today we like to call them the Illuminati, except that's not really who they are. The word Illuminati means enlightened ones, which was established long ago as a secret society that was focused around expanding knowledge through scientific and spiritual understandings. Secret societies
societies were not originally bad, but rather consisted of those who just kind of got it. They understood information that the average person at that time would not accept and demonize. These societies had to be kept a secret because of the control that the church had and refuted the gates of what they wanted to explore. This is where Freemasonry originally comes from. If you do the research on the time periods, what probably happened was that the church, who had the majority of the control at the time, probably infiltrated some of these organizations to make sure that they were not creating plans to expose information and destroy the world order that they had created. This led to the church exposing some of the societies as devil worship and blasphemous, and fear of these groups rose. Over time, many secret societies branched off by those who were corrupt or previously infiltrated by the church and gained more control through the church and large organizations that were being established. Today, there exist 13 families around the world who pretty much own the world, with over 95% of the money and a lust for greed, power, and control. More and more information has become present lately that many of these families may have DNA that is different than the rest of the human population. It is spe power and control. More and more information has become present lately that many of these families may have DNA that is different than the rest of the human population. It is speculated that they share DNA that was passed down from the Martian race or other species races. They contain no love or emotion and are completely power driven. This brings us to the end of the McCoy spent over 20 years working with this prayer and analyzing it with sacred geometry and has discovered some incredible synchronicities. In his book, Live the Promise, he explains how the original prayer, not the extended version, mind you, has seven segments or thoughts which align perfectly with the seven chakras as well as the seven original branches of yoga. Bodhi teaches how to do this prayer meditation, as well as the meditations him and his wife have developed based on the Lord's Prayer, called Heart Dances. It's really quite incredible to see how it all works with the pure geometries of the universe. If you wish to learn more, check out livethepromise.net. If you study Christian religion and Egyptian religion, you'll actually find that they parallel in almost every way except for the Egyptians' understanding of God. Most evidence shows that Christian religion came out of Egyptian religion, and then later they went back and discredited the Egyptians. Zodiac. Halos have been used in the iconography of many religions to indicate holy or sacred figures, and sometimes they've been used to indicate rulers or royalty. Halos are solar discs. Sun symbolism, of course, represents the dragon. The glowing halo of light is sometimes depicted as surrounding the entire figure, not just the head. In such instances, this is known as an aureola. In Latin, it is called the aurea, which means golden. Much like halos, aureolas are luminous clouds which in paintings have been said traditionally to represent sacred personages. The aureola's deeper function is to mask the dragon by acting as a symbolic representation. In fact, aureolas have been depicted with sun rays around them giving clear indication to sun symbolism, which is used to mask the dragon. The common multi-purpose gold crown is actually meant to represent the sun, which as discussed, is a representation of the dragon. Crowns are most often depicted as being worn by royalty, who are most likely Theotokos, offspring of the dragon. The word crown is derived from the Greek god Kronos, a dragon god of the Greek pantheon also known as the god of time, from which the words chronology and chronological are derived. The modern clock face is based on the exact same design as the cross of the zodiac, being that of a circle with a cross in the middle. It simply doesn't give a fuck about you. It's interested in its own power, that's the only thing, keeping it and expanding it wherever possible. Personally, when it comes to rights, I think one of two things is true. I think either we have unlimited rights or we have no rights at all. Personally, I lean toward unlimited rights. I feel, for instance, I have the right to do anything I please. But if I do something you don't like, I think you have the right to kill me. So where are you going to find a fairer fucking deal than that? So the next time some asshole says, gee, I have a right to my opinion, you say, oh yeah, well I have a right to my opinion, and my opinion is you have no right to your opinion. Then shoot the fuck and walk away. Jesus, P.O. Box 38, FTR Station, New York.
Tell Jesus your secret. Take it what I'm selling, spending what I make. 
shaking. You see my house fuck bringing on the bacon. Steak and eggs, take your head, bitch, make my bed. Listen, ho, I'm a pimp, I don't pay for sex. Mouse traps in a bucket of fish. Ducking his sits up in your crib, fucking your bitch. Nearly died last night, but I'm cool, so it don't matter. Big something by my side, like Chewbacca. No chase, hustle a day. Life's a bitch, so I come in a eye. Swamp raps got a week in the head. Dumb bitch spent a week in my bed. Snap your neck, have you seen life from a different angle? He had to step all that left of him is a smoking boot. Filthy scoundrel with a triple barrel row of boat in the motor booze. Built me castle, I was broken vodka bottles. Cancer wholesome, pills I'm dropping like a drunken chemist, fucking leg it. I was gonna say something deep, you wouldn't get it. Save your skull and head it, make it. Blood stain close like a black sweater. You're in a bad spot and it won't be getting better. String a farmer up to a garbage truck when his harvest comes. If the draws grip or oh shit, I char him up. The spawn carpet blown with half a lump. Decked in all cold saga flag, don't sweat it, respect the throne. Peasants, or else heads will roll. My life is like a endless fall from grace with nettles and thorns on the way. Why you always keep a freshly rolled joint on display? Yo, happy days, stay tall, tagging nades, wait. I'm stone on my face, pawning my brain for a quarter of haze. These are glorious days, all of them wasted Oh what a shame, is what I thought I should say The break is over, see your TV, we're taking over again I'm no saint, but I leave a fragrant odour Cause I bathe in Doja, scruffy vagrant stone run a baited roller Stuck in the camp, no, talking to Frank I'm a highly ranked, beer said, my brain's blank I'm getting tanked, your cerebral cortex is getting shanked Neck and shots are suppressed, there's ugly angst so fuck clean living, I've been crooked since birth My nation's damned and cursed, to self-destruct with a fist I reached the pinnacle of success, to choke at the last hurdle I get legless like Kirsten and torture brought in my circle It's them, what the hook, 